Hello everyone, my name is Angelique Jackson, Senior Entertainment Reporter with Variety, and thank you so much for joining us for this very special Variety Streaming Room conversation with the cast and creatives behind HBO's Mayor of Easttown. Now joining me today are executive producer and star Kate Winslet, actors Julianne Nicholson and Evan Peters, creator, writer, showrunner, and executive producer Brad Inglesby, and director and executive producer Craig Zobel. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, the impact that this show has had, everything from murder dirter to getting a mayor of Easttown hoagie at Wawa, you know, and, and of course, not to mention the 16 Emmy nominations for this crew. You know, what are you each most proud of when it comes to this show and, and how people have received it? Uh, Kate, I'll start with you. Um, uh, first of all, thanks for having us, and uh, thanks for such a lovely intro there. Um, I think, I, I mean, I, I, I'll probably just speak for everyone in a way in, in saying that I think the thing that we're proudest of is that we were able to create a very real community within our show of people who have shared experiences and histories that bind them together and that in spite of everything they have all gone through within their lives they no matter what look out for each other and stand up for each other and and that was very important to us collectively and we were blessed with this remarkable script written by Brad that underpinned everyone's narrative so remarkably brilliantly and rooted us entirely in a very very real emotional place um and i think the fact that these characters and this place and that mayor has really struck a chord with so many people has been rewarding and also very surprising because i don't think we ever anticipated capturing a sort of zeitgeist moment in the way that this show really appears to have done and i I perhaps feel, um, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I, I actually think that COVID in a way s sort of added to that a bit because first of all, the way Mare looked at the end of the day is ultimately how everyone emerged from lockdown pretty much feeling, you know, slightly fat, having eaten too many fake foods with a bad head of hair. I mean, I know that was me. So, <laughs> um, so I think that, I think it's sort of all of the above really is, is what we, we probably collectively feel feel proudest of. Yeah, I mean, this is a show that is, um, at the same time, it creates and, and paints a picture of this community so beautifully, but it also is a very introspective series. And like you said about quarantine, I think that this is a time where a lot of us were doing a lot of introspection and it, and it kind of fit into the narrative that a lot of us were going through. Um, Brad, though, to the community aspect, I'll start with you since this is, it's kind of your baby, this narrative, but you are a Pennsylvania native. So you were, you were capturing uh, a little bit of where you're from. Yeah, I think that's what was the, I think the entry point in terms of the writing was wanting to tell a story about, about where I grew up and, and the ways in which I grew up and the people I grew up with. Um, obviously that's not that entertaining in itself. So, you know, we needed to wrap uh, a mystery around it and Mayor was a detective. So that was an easy access point. But yeah, I think, you know, it was, you know, as Kate was saying, I think, you know, one of the things I'm, uh, I'm really happy with is, is the way it's, uh, it paints this community. Uh, I hope it does, you know, you have the level of honesty, but also empathy. And um, I think that was really important while I was writing the scripts was to, you know, to, it was a story about a group of people, a community that we don't always get to see on screen. And, uh, and sometimes when we do, it's not in the, uh, in the best light. And so it was really important to create a cast of characters in a certain place in the world, which you know, obviously growing up in Delaware, it's right across the border there. Um, and to do it with the level of empathy and compassion that you know we don't always get to see. And so that was, and so I would say I was most happy that I was able to tell a story about the people I grew up with in a way that I, I felt was really honest. And um, a lot of people back home have said that to me. So that's been the proudest moment I've had is that they are real, all seem to be happy with the way they're portrayed in the, in the show. Absolutely, getting that seal of approval feels good. Um, Craig, what is it that you are most proud of about the uh, reception to this series? I, you know, I think that what, I guess like what's really stood out to me has been, um, and I do think, uh, as Kate said, like some of this does have to do with with 
the quarantine and, and the lockdown w was that I have had many conversations with people who their first instinct in talking about the the show is to like tell me how much they were you know excited about the murder mystery story and excited about uh, uh, you know the kind of the twist and turns of that but then people kind of almost to a T like all kind of back into a conversation about about how you know recognizing that it, that that this is a story about a person that like needed to like do some self-reflection in order to to kind of move forward in their life and that the, the fact that people actually like kind of got that I, I, I found to be like a win because you don't always you know, you don't always get the, 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 that to happen with a, with a narrative that people kind of get a, a second takeaway like that. So that, that's that been, I think, really powerful for me. Evan and Julianne, I'll, I'll end with the two of y'all. What are you the most proud of? Evan, you want to take this? Uh, Julianne, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, I, I would echo everything that that everyone has said so far. And also just as as um you know as an actor in the show it felt it was very gratifying to hear how how everyone just felt like they believed that we were from there that we weren't just actors put in this place but that we were people from there and that was very um moving for me and also i had a couple of people write to me after the final episode and say how grateful they were for the release that they were able to be taken on this journey with us, but after this sort of intensity and continued buildup of the last year, 16 months, to have that release and end and sort of, I mean, hope might be too strong a word, but you know, people coming back together and, and community and love and forgiveness was really, people picked up on that too, which I found very moving. Great word for that, absolutely. And Evan? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everyone. I think that uh, I, I'm just so happy that, uh, you know, you never know when you're making these things, how they're gonna turn out and how people are gonna respond to them. So I'm just so grateful that everybody uh, watched it and liked it and responded to it in the way that they did. Um, and it was also amazing to work with the cast, Kate and uh, everyone else I got to work with. It was really um, kind of a dream come true. And, and I loved the rehearsal process as well, where we got to, you know, it felt like we were making a seven hour movie and and Kate, you're such a detail oriented actress. It was beautiful to watch that and sort of break down everything and go through the scenes and have a very detailed pass for every character. And then, like you said, Julianne, it's like it's 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 really uh, uh, heartwarming that everybody thought that we were from there. Uh, so all that all that work in the rehearsal process kind of paid off. So that was uh, that was that was very uh, gratifying. Let's dig into that character work for a second, because yes, the flashy part was that y'all all mastered that Delco accent, but there were so many other nuances and 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 backstories and things that you each found in your characters to make these real. Um, Kate, I'll, I'll ask you first, when it comes to Mare, what was either the part of her backstory that you worked on with Brad and Craig, or just something that you invented for her that really helped you find the center of who Mare is? I just am not sure that you really want me to go into the, all of it. It would, it would take so long. No, so, 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 so I, well, I mean, I have to say that, like, I always try and, um, and give a, a character a history of sorts, even if it's loose, you know, where they grew up, whether their parents got divorced, did they have a parent who died, were their siblings around, you know, what kind of socioeconomic background did they have, where do they go to school, some real basics. But I found that as soon as I started mapping out the basics of who Mare was, it just turned into this just really thick canvas that um, that just needed to not only anchor me, but I think provide a sort of a um, provide a kind of a, a rhythm for the sense of family around Mare, number one, um, and then layering in details of I mean, the, the important details that she lost her father when she was young and had had a very close relationship with him. And so I had many, many stories around times that they would have shared together and how he had been a real anchor and inspiration for her in terms of becoming a detective. And she had admired him and looked up to him. And and that that for me was very significant because then the loss of him at such a young age 
would have been so seismic and subsequently had a knock on effect with her relationship with her mother that was always a little bit shaky. And they never really talked about the grief of her dad. So subsequently, Mare learnt you don't talk about grief even before the loss of her son, Kevin. So at the point of the loss of her son, Kevin, she had no skills whatsoever to process such seismic anguish and personal pain and loss. Um, and so she shut down and clammed up about all of it. Um, uh, and then Julianne and I, we basically had some loose ideas about Mare and Laurie's past and realized that they probably went to kindergarten together, actually. They would have really known each other forever. They would have been there when the both girls, you know, would have gotten their first day of their period. You know, they would have shared stories like that. They would have gone through pregnancy childbirth together. And of course, most importantly, Laurie would have been there for Mare when she lost Kevin. And so we built in, you know, we built in those things. And actually that that was that was established really for every character. I and mean, even even Mackenzie Lansing, who plays Brianna, I remember saying to her, you know, so how do you think how do you think we have, you know, related over the years? And she basically just said to me, Well, you've never liked me. And I said, Correct, I've never liked you. <laughs> and so and we had these ideas for our characters that really sort of met up and uh, and fell into place nicely. But that was sort of how we did it, really. And 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 the part of kind of creating the trauma around Kevin dying um, was 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 quite was really quite detailed um, and was hard for me to let go of ultimately afterwards um, because of how deeply sort of immersed I ha had become in all of it. I feel like we <laughs> learned so much from Kate every time we share, I hear something about her. Keep going! Keep going! People want to hear all of these details because it is so detailed. You, all of this work goes it does not go unnoticed on the screen. Julianne, uh, because we talked a little bit about Lori, what was it for you with her that you, you found in her backstory that made it, uh, that, that really centered you in that character? Um, about many, many things. First of all, I do have to say that, I mean, just working with Kate is amazing and, and watching her level of care around every detail is remarkable. And I learned so much and she does it so seamlessly and effortlessly. And it's like, oh, <laughs> I see. That's why, that's just, I mean, she has an innate sort of authenticity and um, like direct line to truth anyway. But then on top of that, to have all the specificity is really unusual and so fun to get to watch. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just listen I'm just ultimately I'm always too afraid of fucking up I'm just like if I don't do the fucking homework I'm gonna be outed as a fraud and so I better do just keep doing it all of it just do as much as possible well, so that I've yeah, got the fattest safety net that's my thing it's, wor it's working whatever you're doing I would say going. <laughs> um, for me, it was, it was the place, even though I'm, I'm from outside of Boston. So the place, though, not necessarily specifically, uh, was I familiar with, but sort of, but I feel like I knew that world and, and those people or the, you know, the outside of Boston version of them. Um, and also just, I, I, I use my imagination a lot, quite honestly, like that she had a very, the relationship with Mare was always already in place, which was helpful, but you know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm, um, and the, the, the way Brad writes, it just felt like it was pretty easy to find, I mean, easy <laughs> in quotes, um, find my way into. Well, it is, this series is all about those relationships, whether that be the mother and child relationships, these, these best friend relationships in the case of, of, of Zabel and Mare, it, it's a very interesting way to, to approach this relationship where a lot of stories would have done the whole, you know, hot shot cop from the city adversarial thing. And it, instead we get this much more interesting, I think, look at this this man who's dealing with this imposter syndrome but is 
kind of covering it up with his with his sweetness. So Evan, for you with Zabel, where did you find you know your in to him? Um, well, I think it was it was honestly it was working with Kate. It was uh, genuinely I was I was uh, you know I've you know Zabel's kind of this by the book detective and. And Kate, you just run on instinct and brilliance and it's all just kind of innate in you. And, uh, and so I, I guess I was trying to, you know, he's, he's also quite, quite stuck, you know, with his, with his ex breaking up with him and moving on and he's living with his mom and he's got all these things. So he, he feels very trapped and, and, and rigid and kind of stuck. And, um, and I remember in the rehearsal process, I remember being like, and then we were talking about how, Zabel, you know, we, we don't want it to have like hearts floating out of Mare's head, you know, and I'm like, oh, but it was, but it was sort of this admiration. And I was like, I think like, I think I kind of am pulled out of this by you. And I'm like, kind of, you're kind of this, like this, this light that sort of brings me out of it. And Kate went, right, that's your key. And then like wrote it down in their thing. And it was just <laughs> this amazing, I- you went, right, that's the key. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that is the key. That's it. And so that's kind of what I went with. And it, to me, it felt very much like just getting in tune with yourself and, and sort of forgiving yourself and moving on and, and trying to um, go about doing things the right way, which I guess is more the way that is suited for you. And I, and I think as opposed to doing things to please everybody else or, or the way that you should do it. Uh, so, so that was kind of, that was kind of my key for, for Zabel. And, and a huge kind of, I think, lesson and, and arc that goes across the, 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 the series as well as Mare kind of learns that she's been also trying to live up to that, you know, those not really her glory days, but what everyone else considers to be her hero moments throughout the series. So we're going to actually take a look at one of the more vulnerable moments from Mare here. And this is when Mare is detailing the loss of her son, Kevin. And it's it's surprising because it's some of the more vulnerable that we've seen from this character. So take a look. Do you think you could walk me through the day that Kevin died? (sighs) Well, um, it was a Sunday. Neighbor called and said that she'd seen Kevin going into the back of the house. He was, uh, he'd been living with us off and on for a while at this point, so, you know, the neighbors kind of knew to call if they saw him because, um, he'd stolen a bunch of things from us before and, uh, you know, we had to put the word out that if anyone noticed him around, I just thought he was there for drug money, like he always was. Um, Frank wasn't home that day. He'd uh, taken Drew to swim lessons, and I knew that Siobhan was right around the corner of her friend's house, so instead of going home myself, I asked her to go check on him for me. I don't even remember driving home. So Kate, what stands out to me in this scene is that we've kind of seen a lot of, like you said earlier, Mare not talking about her grief, not not really mm. talking about uh, truly the state of depression. It, it, it feels like that she's in that underlying current of this story. What was it about that scene or about that moment that really causes her to be that vulnerable with this therapist? It's really, it's really weird. Even like, even you asking me the question about it, and even revisiting that clip, I, I have the same. I'm having the same immediate physical reaction to just watching it that I remember having when filming it, which is that I can feel that my heart is racing and my throat's constricted a bit. Um, it's, it's. I, I mean, I, I, I guess I had to, um, I had to lay the foundations of 
um, a really a really broken relationship that Mare had with her son Kevin. And I think what I appreciated so much in how Brad so delicately crafted this relationship between Mare and Kevin, whom we see a handful of times on screen, the character of Kevin played by Cody, uh, Cody Costro. Um, he was absolutely wonderful. But Mare's relationship with him was 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 never, it was never, it was never easy, you know. And, and she she's at a place where, you know, we see in episode two, she admits to the pediatrician that she had to check out. Like she... She, she couldn't she couldn't really pay attention to all the medications that he was on or when he needed to be administered these drugs. She forgot the names of some of the conditions he was diagnosed with and at what age he was when certain things for him happened developmentally. As a mother myself, I remember when my kids had their vaccinations or the illnesses that they had, and it's all written down somewhere for Mare. She actively chose to not do any of that stuff because she couldn't cope. So in that moment of having to talk through what happened on the day Kevin died, my throat's constricting, <clears throat> just um, talk through it, um, through having to talk through that out loud for the first time ever, it is truly as though she is having to actually show someone the ugly crack in her heart. <sighs> for fuck's sake, Brad. Get a slip. It's happening in my throat again. Right, stop it. I've had therapy to deal with this shit. Like, stop. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I just admitted to that out loud. You see, I, I even became like Mare and like not wanting to admit to the therapy thing. Um, so I think in, in having to talk through what happened on the day he died, not only not only was Mare not around, she, you know, she she'd gone grocery shopping. She phoned her daughter to have her go check on what had happened. She didn't even go there directly herself. So the the incredible guilt that is attached to the loss of her son and the fact that she knows or feels certain in herself that she actively played a role in, in his depression and his inability to heal, to get better, the overload of what ifs in Mare's world literally hung around her every day like dust um and so the creation and the construction of those scenes on paper by brad do you remember brad how how it was an it was a really ever-evolving machine those those therapy scenes weren't they and, and in particular mm -hmm. the mapping out of that that one i remember it was yep. it kept changing even on the day i mean i looked at my script page of that recently just to check a detail <laughs> um because someone if someone had asked me about it in an interview i was like oh i don't know i have to check and i couldn't believe how much like scribble and pen yeah. i just had all over the page yeah. Do, yeah do you remember brad yeah i think we had to modulate you know and a, a part of it was done in the edit but we had to modulate when and how the moments would come out because and Kate, you were a huge part of this, but Mayor has walls around her and, and she's kind of very stubbornly, you know, refused to acknowledge these, you know, the cracks in her heart and her life, the regrets. And so you, all those moments, I think the hard part, Angelique, was how do you earn those moments with a character like Mayor? They, they all have to be earned so that you don't get into the, you know, into the second episode and Mare spilling her guts because that's not going to be true to who Mare is. So Kate and I and Craig, and we always had to modulate how much is revealed. It was the order of revelation. That was the importance of it. It wasn't, you know, we knew we were going to have to reveal the details, but with a character like Mare, how do you reveal them and when do you reveal them is the most important thing, you know, because they have to be earned because Mare's not going to reveal those moments unless there's a level of trust and vulnerability that mayor doesn't have so kate and i and craig were always scratching out lines of dialogue because it's like is this too soon this has got to happen later I, th I think that was the key kate is when is she able to emotionally reveal the details that she's been guarding and and when they're revealed the audience has to believe in that moment that we've earned the right to have that reveal so it was a, just always having to strategically plan. And then you have an actress like Kate that when those moments come out, they're just incredibly emotional and brilliant. And that's and that's a testament to Kate. But also it's a testament to Kate. I would say Kate sort of inherited the trauma. And I think that's what she's getting at now is, to, you know, just like a, a real trauma, 
a trigger comes along, it's you mentioning Kevin, and it's, you know, I think because Kate owned the trauma so deeply that a mention of Kevin triggers that trauma and there's a, a physical reaction. So that's how, how deep Kate has owned the trauma that even now when a mention comes along, it still has a reaction there. And it also feels very much like a realistic portrayal of therapy in that it's a lot easier for her to spill this to a person who's more or not more or less a relative stranger than it is to talk about it with her family where there has been this you know this cycle of generational trauma that has been passed down uh, through the generations but Craig to you what do you remember of, of that scene yeah I actually just to jump off of what Brad was saying I mean I think that mayor is probably not a person that ever has gone to therapy or had much use for a, a you know, a good opinion of therapy even. And like, so I feel like as much as, you know, with a scene like that, you know that it's gonna, it sort of looms in the like background of the shoot that you know you have to shoot that one day. I think yeah, exactly. we really, and it was a very intuitive thing. I do remember the conversations around how we were gonna play that scene on the day. And like, as Craig said, we were we were all absolutely dreading it. Like it, it it became it became the 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 stuff we didn't want to talk about as much as Mayor didn't want to talk about Kevin and I do remember being very very clear with Brad and Craig and saying I have to do everything I possibly can not to cry when recounting this story because there's a very strange thing that happens as an actor sometimes when you cry it can have the opposite effect on the audience whereby you sort of take their space to be able to emote and react you've sort of the air is let out of it if you do the crying for yourself and you sort of rob them of the right to do that if it strikes a chord with them so I had to the fighting not crying part was I actually remember I think I threw up after we shot that scene <laughs> because of the feeling of held this held not being able to really release it and just trying to recount the facts um Un, un, unwillingly and sort of scratching at the memories too you know she's buried it so deeply in herself that you know I, I remember I, I remember almost not wanting to and this is a strange admission for me because I'm obsessed with dialogue but almost not wanting to learn the dialogue too well so that I myself would be scratching for it trying to reach for it all the time as, as though it's Mare reaching for those yep. memories. Yeah, uh, one thing I would say just to, about as much as, you know, seeing Kate now be, be uh, you know, emotional over just thinking about that scene, on the day of, to give her credit to how much of a professional she is, she, you know, walked in and was like, okay, let's put our shoes on and do this. <laughs> and like, you didn't yeah. see any of that that day. So yeah. she's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well when it comes to emotion and just the wide range of things that you all had to play in this i was uh i was reading a tweet from a friend of mine who asked is there an hbo camp where they teach people new and inventive ways to cry the range of sobs on mayor of east town is astounding uh <laughs> so that leads me pretty directly into this incredible scene between Lori and mayor as ryan has confessed uh, to our central mystery, the, the murder of Aaron McMenamin. Why didn't you come to me? Or... No, just one thing. Why couldn't you just leave it alone? You have John. Why couldn't you just leave it alone? It's Ryan. It's Ryan. It's my Ryan. My Ryan. <laughs> it was an accident. He doesn't even know how to hold a gun. Lord. Why couldn't you just leave him alone? My whole family has gone out because of him. What was it, when it comes to that scene, and I, I understand it was relatively early on in, in the filming process, right? It was, was that your first scene together? No, 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 no. Okay. We we had we had filmed other scenes, but yes, it was sort of early on in the in in the. It was know, it was our it was our third, third week. 
Yeah, it was like our third week of shooting. It was it was no, sometime in November, twenty nineteen. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I guess I'll just say. I mean, I just remember it was. I think the last scene of a cold Friday night. Um. And I agree with Kate about that thing about you know sometimes if the character has the feelings, the audience can't or not can't, but are, it can take it away for them because it's already happening somewhere else. But I remember in that scene, there was, uh, I believe, Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There was a thing of like, we need to see her primal. We need to see her pain. It's not about holding it in. It's like, she's been holding, holding, holding. So it's like the damn bursts. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so this is Brad's writing. Now I'm getting upset. <laughs> 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 I mean, okay. this is what we were like all the time. Sometimes Julianne and I would get to work knowing we had a difficult scene and we couldn't even say hello to each we other. We didn't look at each other. Oh. I remember Kate no. and I just kept our distance that mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we did it a couple of times. And then I, I remember one time I was like, oh God, I can't believe I have to fucking do this again. And then, so I went to Kate for a hug because at that point I needed something new. I needed something extra. And so to feel that, that um, that love that these two people have, and then you can understand more the loss of that. And so, I mean, there's just so much going on in, in that scene and it was sort of um, terrible, but it also ends and you're like, what just happened? I don't know, I hope that worked. They said it did. I guess I'll go home now, eh? <laughs> Like, it's very odd, uh, but people seem to have responded to it. So that's good. Love amplifies that feeling of betrayal where this is, you know, yeah. your best friend. And how could she do this to your family when it, it, this was all she had? I mean, and I think that Brad, I, I to speak to that element of it, centering this relationship between these two women and making it um, such like an emotional core to this, this series. Why was it so important to have Lori and Mayor um, or, or to build Lori and Mayor out this way? Well, I think it was important because the, you know, if, if you look at Mare's character arc in the show, you have a woman who's kind of, you know, defiantly not going to confront the thing that's, that's been haunting her in her life. So what's going to get her to confront this you know, ghost in her life? And, and I was convinced, and I know Kate was too, that, that if you're going to get Mare to ultimately go up to the attic at the end, then you know, what she has to go through has to be really dramatic and profound. And if, so then, so then the case, if the case is about some person she doesn't have any relationship with or someone we glimpsed in an episode and then we reveal to be the killer, it's not going to work. It has to be um, a relationship that the audience cares about so that, so that once the cards are laid out on the table, it's not only a surprise, but it's an emotional punch and such an emotional punch that is going to impact her personal life in a way that's going to get her up to the attic. And so, you know, layering in that relationship was incredibly important. And so when you got to the end, um, again, it, it was a surprise, hopefully, that it was Ryan, but also it was such an emotional punch that um, that the audience was devastated and, and yet it was, um, uh, it was a moment of hope. I, I've always seen Mayor going up to the attic as as a, a quiet triumph, really, you know. And so, again, I think you had to build in the history of these two women, the friendship. And so when you got to the end, it wasn't just surprising in terms of the mystery, but it was deeply emotional. And it, and, and it had to be emotional enough to break down Mayor's walls and give her the chance to go up and confront the thing that's been haunting her. Yeah, and I remember just, just to add to that, I mean, when we when we filmed the scene in the car, I the 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 shiv volume of of pain and emotion that was coming out of Julianne in every single take was, I mean, she was properly vibrating, like her whole being was vibrating and. Julianne, I know you won't mind me saying, but Julianne has a son who is almost exactly the age that Cameron, who plays Ryan, is. And so, so the, 
you know, the, the, these horrible sort of parallel lines that any any one of us as parents can can draw, knowing that, you know, it's such a fine line when your teenagers are that vulnerable and they can just make one bad decision and it can impact on the rest of their lives in that way. And and Julianne was, I mean, it was staggering, breathtaking work that you deliver in that scene. Definitely. It was truly, truly extraordinary. And and I've never felt so privileged, really, and grateful to have had that. Truly, truly, because what it what it also then did, and this joins the dot to Brad and what he was just saying, is that it meant that when Mare does go into the attic, these moments with Laurie were all stepping stones to Mare getting there. And they are, they, are, they are two women who are at exactly the same place in their life. They both lost sons. Their worlds have completely fallen apart. And they have almost no option but to come together again, to try and write the next chapter, whatever that might be, with compassion and mercy. And as Brad has always said about this show, it is just so much about mercy and forgiveness and and, and understanding and admitting mistakes and mm-hmm. and and we were really able to to build on those things, but would not have been able to do that at all were it not for Julianne's incredible performance in the car. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> comes to admitting mistakes and this whole idea of self-forgiveness that is of course a big part of Zabel's storyline as well we get a a chance to look at it sometimes in a little bit more of a lighter way um, in this scene in the bar where he is at his high school reunion which I think we can all admit are are always awkward at the very least Um, Mm -hmm. but in this case he really is vulnerable and kind of spills what has been holding him back getting that age right Forgive me, but I'm like I'm getting to the age where I'm starting to look at my life and I'm going, well, here's what I thought it would be. And here's what it actually is. Am I making any fucking sense? I always imagined I'd be a cop, so life around me I didn't expect to fall apart so spectacularly. So Evan, in in this case, we were talking about the shock of the ending of this series, but I think there was also a major shock in episode five with Zabel's character that I feel like probably wouldn't work as much if we didn't, you know, get to peel behind the layers of him throughout those five episodes. So talk to me about this scene, playing drunk, uh, opposite uh, Kate Winslet. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, well, I did a lot of research in my 20s, that's for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I felt like I, I, thought, I, that. Thought, I thought you were still researching now. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, alone in the hotel room in Philly. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I. I was excited to play that, um, to play that scene. Uh, there's a lot of freedom when you can play drunk for sure. And, uh, I'm very nervous. Uh, I, I listened to, um, uh, Michael McDonald's, uh, lonely teardrops a lot in between takes to kind of give that, that feeling. Uh, and I really like, I mean, that scene, I really was trying, I, I just wanted to capture this feeling of, uh, of, uh, of, of sort of loss and missed opportunities and not being where you want to be in your life. And um, I might've gone a little too far. I think I might've mind fucked myself a little bit too much because I'm, I'm afterwards, Craig, I remember walking up to you sobbing hysterically going, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I fucked it up. I didn't get it. And I need to shadow you and I'm quitting. I can't do this. And, um, and you were like, I think, I think we got it. And uh um yeah i don't know i think i i think we got it but i but i uh <laughs> <laughs> we got I'm it still i'm still like i don't know i'm pretty sure we got it. About it i think we can all speak think, for everybody and say you, got it. Okay. you definitely you. yeah okay. definitely definitely got it oh okay. my god i was so excited about that scene because like you 
everyone's had the experience where they're like with uh they've met a new coworker in some way and then they like see them out of context somehow and it just totally changes your idea of who that person is i remember like beforehand being like uh, days or maybe weeks beforehand being like i think that he should be pretty drunk <laughs> like, yeah. like because i think it's like that just the shock of like oh that isn't what i thought that that guy was going to be like you know and it's time off it it helps you like it just it helps you you know feel like colin is like a a, a, a real person in a way i i thought I, I, yeah i thought it also i remember we decided he was going to be shit-faced and and it was like it was also sort of the idea that maybe he was drinking to help cover up this lie and to sort of live with that and to live yeah. with himself and like I, had, I felt like maybe it helped right. that a little bit too but um but yeah it is pretty jarring to see your co-worker <laughs> out totally. but i remember evan i remember you but evan was like i wasn't gonna let him go so far down this kind of like self-flagellating tangent of like I'm shit I'm I suck and give me a good drama coach and and, and yeah, after yeah, in, yeah. after initially being like look it's don't be silly you're totally doing this after about half an hour of that I was like stop saying that just do it I know <laughs> you're like right <laughs> let's go so, because you were so doing it I didn't yeah. want you to keep like pulling yourself away from what it was that you were doing that was so brilliant and i was like look just come on do it again go back do it again do it again if you want do it a different way try it again stop whinging stop yeah. complaining come on. <laughs> I, know, I, I felt like i had to be like a mother wrangling a drunk child pull yourself together do it stop it <laughs> it helped it helped thank you yeah but yeah. you told but you were this was the thing was like the first take it was like okay he's nailed it already but i'm not gonna tell him that right. <laughs> right well it was like it was like well let's see how amazing we can make it i mean it was like, yeah <laughs> it was yeah and then uh, the, and then to, to have evan at the end be like i don't think we gotta i was like dude <laughs> I, just, I, I love that scene so much too i love all the little throwaways there, I mean, just your, the way you sort of modulate volumes, what's to her, what's to yourself, what's to him, what's the throwaway, and how much humor you bring. And just, it is, I just, I, I think it's one of the best scenes I've ever seen, drunk <laughs> or not. I just, I yeah. really thought that was like spectacular mm -hmm. acting. Thank you. Thanks, Julianne. Yeah, it's it's really true. true. Thanks. Totally the true. Coffee, the apple cider vinegar is that like a secret potion to actually, you know, getting the best scene <laughs> yeah. in the in that it is now. It is now. <laughs> now that's what they're using. <laughs> I know it's it's actually just for the shots. Like I, I feel like every time you take a shot and it's colored water, you're just kind of like that. I that doesn't taste like booze at all. So it just gives it a little a little something to 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 react to. Because mm. I can't do sense memory very well. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's apple cider vinegar and uh, cheese whiz, and you have the perfect recipe for some award-winning acting. Um, Kate, Evan, Brad, Julianne, Craig, thank you so much for diving into Mayor of Easttown with us. And I know the fans have a zillion more questions for you, but they're just going to have to keep tweeting and DMing and, and doing all of those things because... We're going to be talking about this series for for some time. Really, congratulations and thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.